Well, folks, we've officially received news that Roquan Smith has uh, requested a trade. Um, this has been speculation for some time. Um, it seems as though most Bears fans have kind of sensed that something was wrong. I know that there was the um, troll on Packers Twitter who was attacking every single Bears media member and everybody else for daring to say that there's anything wrong, um, whether it be Robert Quinn or Roquan Smith or whoever. But we officially got some level of confirmation. And not only that, it, it really goes much deeper. Um, we get to not only see that Roquan has officially said, I want out of here, but we get a little bit behind the scenes. And, and it's it's really, you know, what I had put on Twitter for the Chicago Bears is that it goes much, much deeper. Because I've, I've even started to come around to the Bears, you know, the... Hey, look, you, you got Riley Reef, you got Schofield. That's that's going to improve. And, and Lucas Patrick, when he comes back from his injury, I don't know the severity of that, but you got the offensive line. If Justin Fields can take a step, you got the running back, you at least have Mooney, even though everything else is a disaster. You know, you can kind of put the pieces together a little bit, you know, get, give credit to the two rookie uh, DBs or whatever. You can kind of see a little bit here. But I think the, the issue is deeper at this point than just talent. I, I think this is a deeply toxic culture in Chicago. And what's surprising to me is I had just always assumed that the issue in Chicago has to do with a culture that was before the current regime, right? Because we saw prior to the new regime coming in, polls, um, Hicks was trying to force his way off, right? Last year, really, really, really trying to get off until he realized he couldn't. And then he was like, okay, I, I really want to be in Chicago because he wants the contract, right? He's going to try to get that contract elsewhere. And when he realized that wasn't going to happen, now all of a sudden he's the biggest Bears fan and all this stuff. And so he he comes back and then the next year he is out of there. Um, the same thing happened with Allen Robinson. Really, really, really wanted off the team. And it just seemed like everybody really was trying to force their way off. And if you think about that 2018 team, how many guys are left? Half the offensive line is gone. The wide receivers are gone. The, uh, you know, I mean, Khalil was shipped off, but <clears throat> I don't know that he really wanted to be there. Um, the corners are gone. The defensive tackles are gone. Everybody's gone. Uh, some of that is by the team's doing, and and but I, but I, it, you just get the impression that nobody wants to be there, and the people that are there aren't trying. Akeem Hicks had one of his worst years of his career. Allen Robinson had one of the worst years of his career. The guys just don't want to play for the Bears. And so when you see things like this, you just assume, okay, this is still that level of, discontent from guys from from previous you know that they, they haven't gotten over it and they don't want to give the new regime the opportunity to prove that they can do anything that was my assumption not that there's anything wrong with this current team necessarily other than the fact that they're bad and and I don't want to be a part of this rebuild and all this nonsense but that doesn't seem to be the case necessarily and and, and in a sense this all kind of makes sense but I, before we get to that uh, any further I should say let's um Let's take a look at what Roquan said on social media here. To the city of Chicago and all Bears fans worldwide, I have officially requested a trade. Just writing these words is deeply painful. I'm a kid from Mason County, Georgia. When you grow up playing football, you dream of making it to the NFL one day. However, playing the linebacker position, you never imagine getting drafted top 10 by the Chicago Bears. Some homegrown bear dream come true for that Bears helmet on. Wear the same jersey that the legendary linebackers did. It's an indescribable feeling. Walking these hallways the past four years, you can feel the spirit, you can feel the pressure to live up to the timeless history, the great legacy. Um, I dreamed of playing like Wilbur Marshall, Singletary, Briggs, Urlacher, Butkus. Since that day I was drafted, I vowed to play the position at a level that upheld the standard that was set before me to uphold that respect and honor, and I have. Okay, I get all that. Here's where it gets interesting. Next page, please, sir. Thank you. Here we go. Unfortunately, the new front office regime doesn't value me here. Oh? <laughs> they refuse to negotiate in good faith. Every step of this journey has been take it or leave it. The deal sent to me is one that would be bad for myself and for the entire linebacker market if I signed it. I've been trying to get something done that's fair since April, but their focus has been on trying to take advantage of me. I wanted to be a bear for my entire career. Help this team bring a Super Bowl back to our city. However, they have left me no choice than to request a trade that allows me to play for an organization that truly values what I bring to the table. I've had the chance to talk to the McCaskey family. Maybe they can salvage this 
Yeah, right. Um, but as of right now, I don't see a path back to the organization I truly love. I hope and pray you all can understand. I'm deeply sorry it's come to this. This is bad for the Chicago Bears. Not not for Packers fans. This is glorious news. This is horrible for the Chicago Bears. Now, let me say this. I, I have borderline respected polls and what he's done um, up to this point, in, insofar as he's not going to be forced to be beholden to the mistakes of the previous administration, which makes sense because the previous administration was garbage. They made a ton of bad decisions, even so far as not committing to Justin Fields. Now, from a PR standpoint, I think they've done a bad job because the fan base is obsessed with Justin Fields. So maybe you want to kind of keep that reality hidden to yourself a little bit and then kind of, you know, say you're going to bet, not, not even just for the fan base, but for your locker room. This is their whole team. And to sit there and be like, nah, I don't know if I'm going to commit to anybody on this team. I'm going to build things my way the way I want to do it. I respect that they do that. I don't think from a PR standpoint, he did a very good job of navigating how to go about that, right? That was a huge thing where they tried, you know, the media and everybody tried to get him to commit to fields, commit to fields, and he wouldn't do it. And so again, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is great. And then he keeps doing it, right? And you can tell that Poles really wants to bring in his own guys. But at this point, this is becoming ugly because everybody on this team feels not just like they don't want to be here, but even the guys that wanted to stay. Listen to what Roquan is saying. Unlike Akeem Hicks, unlike um, whoever else that, that, that has said that they don't want to be here, he's saying, I do want to be here. I do want to be a bear. I do want to stay here for the current regime, for Eberflus, for 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 Poles and everybody else. I want to be here for this rebuild. I want to be here for the city of Chicago. I want to be here for Soldier Field, for for all my fans. I just want to be paid fairly. And um, essentially, Poles, being Poles, is saying, here's what you're valued to me. You're not my pick. I don't value you as much as the previous regime did. Therefore, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you, but I'm not going to pay you X, Y, Z. I'm just not going to do it. Um, and the problem, again, on one hand, you respect it. On the other hand, you look at it and say, the entire locker room is looking at this, and, and they're all feeling it. And, and R Robert Quinn, same thing. And I, I remember I had assumed when Robert Quinn was kind of staying away and all these rumors had come out, that Robert Quinn didn't want to be here because, again, everybody else was trying to force their way off. And when he came back and I read the comments that he had made when he gave his you know, press conference or whatever, he made it very clear that he did not feel welcome in Chicago. It was the complete opposite of what I had assumed. I had assumed that it had nothing to do with um, them not wanting... I mean, because Quinn would make perfect sense. I know you're changing your defensive scheme, but he's a guy that, is, that has spent his career going from a 4-3 to a 3-4 and back to a 4-3 and back to a 3-4. He, he's one of the true versatile you know, guys that can stand up, put his hand in the dirt, whatever. I mean, he, he's a perfect fit for this transition that you're making. Um, and a guy that's a bear. And every, I mean, he's one of the few guys that should be seamless. He had a great year last year. And you're isolating him. And it just seems like Poles is doing a horrific job as a new GM, um, you know, he's, he's, th this is sort of the, um, I think, inexperience on his part to come in with the right philosophy. In other words, you know, it's all theoretical. And in theory, he's doing things right. But his interpersonal skills, his PR skills, his ability to know how to talk to the media, how to talk to his locker room, he is projecting and, and, and here's the thing, half this locker room is probably filled with guys that either Poles went out and got himself or that Poles loves, but you've got Roquan, who is the star of your team. I mean, I, I don't personally think he's as good as Bears fans do and all that, but we don't, we don't even need to get into all that. He is perceived by the Chicago Bears fans, by the state of Illinois, throughout the NFL, and inside this locker room as one of the best, if not the best, players on this entire team. And you're making him feel unwelcome. The star of last year's team, Robert Quinn, is made to feel unwelcome. The quarterback of your franchise has been made to feel unwelcome, not only by saying that you, refusing to say you're going to commit to him, but then in the draft, what do you do? You don't support him in the draft, which again, I, I theoretically, I love that. You're not going to be beholden to Justin Fields and, and make bad decisions 
just because everybody feels you should. I'm going to take the best player available. That's how you build a franchise. I'm, I'm, I'm with that. I get that. But it's just a continued message over and over and over of I will not support Justin Fields. I will not support Roquan Smith. I will not support if you are a part. Everybody that was here prior to polls is, is the stepchild of the organization, right? They're made to feel as though they're not one of the family. You know, it was somebody had made a comment. It, 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 it's it's probably a nothing thing, but it just popped into my head from from training camp yesterday. They were talking about the offensive line and how this all kind of goes together. And I think it's Braxton Jones. Um, they were trying to decide if Riley Reef or Braxton Jones is going to win that left tackle job. And um, the assumption or, or what some people were saying, and I think Bears fans were excited about it, is that Braxton's going to win that job because we want Braxton to be good, right? He's a, what, a fifth round pick or something. And if he can come in and be that good to win the job over Riley Reef, that's fantastic. But um he had he had gone and like dapped up one of the guys. It, it again, it's one of those things, and it, again, it's probably nothing. But Poles is out there dapping up his draft picks and the guys that he brings in. But yet, guys that were here before him, you know, look at Tevin Jenkins. Now I know Tevin Jenkins isn't a good football player. I get all that, but he was given the opportunity to be a good football player. He was given that chance to come in and compete and try to win the starting job. He played all last year. I mean, you know, not all last year, but he played a lot as a starter. Again, granted, he was terrible. But the new regime comes in, and what do they do? They drop him to the third team and make it very clear, you're garbage, and we're not going to give you any opportunity to prove anything. Now, he's since he came back from his injury, he's got some second-team reps and everything else, but I think even maybe first-team right guard or something. But there is just this general feeling of you're not good enough. You are a part of that old garbage culture, and we don't want you here. And the problem with that is it's going to bleed into the new guys. So everybody you bring in that you're trying to brainwash into this new culture of you're better than them, we're going to to build a new culture that's away from them, which is psychotically toxic. It's this right here. Roquan is the leader of your team and is saying, I want to be here. I want to support these guys in the locker room. They don't want me here. The new guys coming in are going to have a problem with this. So this is this is bad. And keep your eyes on guys like Tevin Jenkins. Keep your eyes on guys like Robert Quinn. Um, because this is the mentality of the new the new regime that has come in. They don't have any respect for Tevin Jenkins. They have no desire for him. If they can get anything for him, I'm sure they will. And it seems to be the case with Robert Quinn, and I don't understand that. But again, he has made it clear, just like we're hearing here, that they're not making me feel welcome. I think they're going to move on from me. Now, maybe, maybe he's just misreading the situation, but that is his assumption, is that he's not feeling welcome. So, I don't know. But um, pretty big news. I'm assuming that this is definitive. He's putting out a statement like this, Roquan is. Um, in other words, he will not be back. And, and, and again, and that's the other thing, too, is, you know, as far as winning the PR battle and trying to do the right things, Roquan came into camp. He didn't hold out. He held in, right? He's saying, look, I want to work this out, but I'll, I'll come in. I'll come in. I'll do the work. I'll, I'll be there to support the team, support everybody. Um, I want to work out this contract, but he's, tr- he's doing the right things, and he's still not being reciprocated. You know, uh, Bears fans are banging the drum for polls, and he's doing a great job, and we're excited about him. This is bad, man. And, and you guys got to stand up and just say, you got to turn this around. The fact that he's running to the McCaskies to help him with Ryan Poles, nobody likes the McCaskies. <laughs> not Bears fans, not, not players, nobody. So for Roquan to go over Poles' head, to go to the McCaskies and say, hey, you work this out because this jag-off is, is causing problems. Um. That's a massive issue. And, and, it, and again, it goes beyond talent evaluation or everything else. Maybe he's going to do a great job of drafting and developing, and, or drafting at least, and, and we'll developing is up to the coaches, or free agent acquisition and all that stuff, but it doesn't matter. Um, it's a big thing I've been talking about with, with the Packers. You heard Robert Tunyon uh, talking about why the Packers keep losing in the playoffs because they get this sort of like imposter syndrome. It's all, it's all emotional um, mentality type stuff. 
you know, how you feel as a franchise, the, the camaraderie of your locker room. When the, when the Packers were terrible back in, you know, 2017, 2018, it, it was because of a toxic culture largely. The entire locker room was a disaster. He's got to figure that out. I, again, I, I respect the philosophy of what Poles is doing, but if in the process of building in the right way, you destroy the culture and make everybody feel unwelcome and isolate everybody from your, from your uh, best linebacker to your starting quarterback, you have ruined this franchise for the foreseeable future. And your, your job is you have doomed yourself. You cannot build a quality team with what you're doing. Period. End of story. So, um, yeah, that's that's it, man. So, pretty big news out of Chicago, and um, hopefully, hopefully we'll see. <laughs> depending on where you're falling on this as a Packer fan, hopefully we continue to see these issues crop up. But if you're a, a Bears fan or or whatever, um, Poles has got to get this under control because he this PR battle is spiraling completely out of control. But, anyways, uh, that's it for the news today. Take care, and uh, we'll be back with hopefully more (laughs) disastrous Bears news in the future.